ஹலோ ஆல் வெல்கம் டு யூஜிசி இபிஜி பாட்சாலா இன் த கோர்ஸ் ஆஃப் லிங்குஸ்டிக்ஸ் ஐ எம் சோம்நாத் ராய் ஐ வில் பி ஸ்பீக்கிங் ஆன் ஸ்பீச் சிக்னல் ப்ராசஸிங் த கோர்ஸ் மாடியூல் ஹேஸ் பின் ரிட்டன் பை டாக்டர் சமுதிர விஜயா கே ஸோ ஐ வில் பி ஸ்பீக்கிங் ஆன் பிஹாஃப் ஆஃப் ஹிம் த ஓவர் வியூ ஆஃப் திஸ் கோர்ஸ் மாடியூல் இஸ் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் வில் சி ஹவு ஹியூமன் பீங்ஸ் யூஸ் டு டாக் யூஸிங் ஸ்பீச் ஆஸ் அ மீடியம் and how uh, human uh, uh, apparatus like human uh, uh, speech production system works uh, in producing different kind of uh, sounds and followed by uh, speech signal analysis in in time and frequency domain and then followed by speech uh, signal processing and and finally we will look a uh, look at the topics of what kind of features are essential for modeling uh, building an asr system or speech speaker recognition system so as we all know that uh, human beings the primary mode of communication between human beings are the speech even if we are at a distance we can talk to each other via phones and the mode of communication is is uh, speech so human beings use speech which is an acoustic uh, signal to exchange the thoughts uh, encoded uh, in that speech signal and get exchange to uh, to to the follow you know uh, uh, follow listeners and, or, or the inter, interlocutor so the primary goal of speech communication is to convey an idea in speaker's mind or the idea or concept or information uh, that is encoded in the speech signal so a speech signal also carries auxiliary information such as the the speaker's characteristics the language being used as well as the acoustic environment so if you look at the topic of um, uh, look at the system uh, schematic diagram of an asr system so the in asr system the speech signal goes as an input and the text comes as an output so even uh, even the human uh, human ear or the whole cognitive system takes a uh, speech signal as the primary input and and then we decode that speech signal and find uh, the linguistic uh, uh, encoded meaning from those speech signal so uh, what how is uh, the speech production system of human uh, human beings behave uh, and how it works uh, to Uh, to produce different kind of sounds uh, uh, through which we exchange our ideas so different uh, different sounds in human beings uh, is produced using different type of articulatory configurations so uh, we will look at the pictures to see how uh, what kind of articulatory configuration is required to produce different kind of sounds and in particular we will uh, look at the voice sounds because voice sounds are produced by the vib- vibration of vocal cords or vocal folds and the rate of vibration of vocal fold is known as fundamental frequency the perceptual correlate of fundamental frequency is called pitch so just to have a look at uh, you know uh, this uh, fundamental frequency or speech production system i'll just uh, show you some of the images uh, which uh, relates to and the uh, schematic diagram of speech production system of uh, human beings as you can see in this uh, in in this uh, uh, figure that uh, the vocal uh, this is the vocal uh, vocal cord and the vibration of this vocal cord uh, what happens like when these two vocal cords come close to each other they vibrate and there is a pressure difference between uh sub subglottal and supraglottal so this subglottal pressures when when it uh, increases the supraglottal pressure then air releases between these vocal cords and that release of air uh, goes to the uh, to the um, uh, oral tract or or uh, oral tract and there different kind of configuration uh, uh, generates different kind of sounds so uh, the, the main articulators are uh, the lips the tongue body jaws and 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 uh, another is the nasal cavity as well as velum as you can see so the the main source uh, of uh, uh, voice sounds are 
are the vibration of vocal cords that that you can see and and the uh, complete details of this articulatory mechanism can be found in in as has been cited in Pandey 2015 in, in this UGC module so well uh, uh, and and what happens is once the air through that vocal cord is released that small air pocket coming through the glottis causes resonant vibration in the air molecule in the vocal cavity and that resonance uh, that resonance uh, uh, causes you know uh, uh, some sort of energy energy that get concentrated in in some particular frequency bands in 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 that resonant area and that uh, that uh, sort of energy concentration in different frequency bands are called formant frequencies so what we have uh, you can also observe is that uh, the distinction between vowels can be measured at on on, on the basis of uh, you know formant frequency or the energy concentration at different uh, frequency bands so so generally the um, the formant frequencies are nothing but but the uh, energy concentration at higher frequency ranges so next we will we'll look at uh, this uh, so uh, now we'll see the speech analysis in time and frequency domain so in time domain the time is uh, once the speech signal is recorded you can see that speech uh, waveform and the speech waveform is represented as uh, uh, time on, on the linear uh, horizontal axis and uh, amplitude on the vertical axis. So, and, and in looking at the waveform, you can, uh, you can see uh, the, the uh, region where, where the energy is more. So, uh, in, in, in this example waveform, you can see this is a, a sentence uh, with the word called Thiruvananthapuram where it has five vowels and eight consonants and you can see all the energy the reason where higher energies are concentrated are the vowels so uh, this is not pretty conventional uh, to look at the waveform and to detect what kind of vowel it is so to to analyze this uh, feature uh, which feature can 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 uh, uh, disambiguate or categorize what kind of vowel it is uh, so to ana analyze that we have to move into different domain that is called frequency domain so now we are changing the domain we are moving from time domain to frequency domain so in this uh, domain uh, uh, you, you, you will have to take you know small frame of uh, or small chunk of a sound and uh, from that you have to analyze uh, the frequency spectrum so frequency spectrum is nothing but uh, but uh, a representation where you know frequency will be on the horizontal axis and the amplitude in decibel will be on the vertical axis so one point i just want everybody to be uh, to note down is that amplitude is a logarithmic uh, in db is a logarithmic scale because you know um, this uh, uh, it is not uh, because a human uh, ear is designed in such a fashion that uh, it it is uh, linear at some scale uh, to some frequencies and then it starts behaving non-linearly so to uh, uh, the difference between uh, the minimum and the maximum is so high that it is very uh, difficult to represent that on on uh, on the linear scale that's why we use logarithmic scale to represent this amplitude so uh, the amplitude that we see in uh, see on the vertical axis is on the logarithmic scale so uh, and we have also seen that uh, the frequency is um, frequency component can be um, uh, is capable of distinguishing you know the what kind of uh, vowel it is so if we have to distinguish between a e and different vowels then we have to plot their frequency spectrum to uh, and we have to plot their frequency spectrum to uh, categorize those vowel and from those frequency spectrum we calculate uh, you know the formant frequency the the the, uh, the peak of the formant and uh, the width of the formant 
and, and the frequency uh, range. So this frequency range peak and width is used as a feature to categorize the vowels. So, so, uh, so generally uh, two types of peaks are visible in spectrum. One is called narrow peak that occur at regular frequency level and another is uh, broad peak which is irregularly spaced uh, peaks in spectral envelope. So what we do is uh, to, to get that broad curve is we just join the curve uh, to the top of the narrow peaks. So we do not need you know uh, the narrow peaks uh, to categorize the vowels. We just need the broad peaks and that broad peaks uh, are capable to distinguish the different type of vowels. So so and now we'll be moving to you know uh, different feature that we use for building uh, uh, different uh, ASR system and uh, different speaker recognition system. Uh, so, uh, capstrum analysis is uh, capstrum. Uh, capstrum is one of the uh, important features that is used in in a speech uh, that is uh, extracted from the speech signal to to build uh, build a speech speech or uh, a speech recognition system or a speaker recognition system. Uh, so uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, capstone analysis what we do is we take a uh, small uh, signal uh, let's say of 25 milliseconds so that will go to the uh, to the FFT, uh, FFT module so FFT module will uh, calculate the FFT of that uh, short time signal uh, and uh, then we compute the log so that log of uh, FFT will be the power spectrum and then um, we get the uh, uh, then we get the log log spectrum and when the log spectrum is computed then we compute the inverse Fourier transform so inverse Fourier transform of log spectrum is called uh, capstrum so the smoothing of log power of spectrum is called capstrum smoothing so uh, we, we just need you know the capstrum coefficients to represent uh, a short signal uh, uh, so if we have a short signal of 25 milliseconds so we can extract you know certain number of uh, uh, coefficients from the capstrum uh, capstrum to say that okay these many caps uh, capstrum coefficient can represent represent uh, this signal so uh, the capstrum coefficients are one of the uh, important features that is used for building uh, ASR and uh, uh, some such systems. So as I have already pointed out that uh, this uh, our uh, human auditory system behaves uh, linearly to some fre uh, frequency and then it becomes nonlinear. So uh, to map that uh, phenomena in uh, speech modeling we use a scale that is called Mele scale and uh, Mel scale is uh, 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 generally uh, defined as if we have to use Mel scale. So the formula for uh, Mel scale is 1125. This means 1125 multiplied by natural log of 1 plus F divided by 700. So if we have to compute the um, um, uh, Mel scale or Mel scale of a frequency component then we have to apply this formula to get the MFCC feature or Mel uh, scale frequency uh, Mel, uh, Mel capstrum. So uh, 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 we have looked at the feature called MFCC but one of the important feature is spectrogram which phoneticians use uh, for visualizing a phone. So uh, and spectrogram can be uh, uh, extracted uh, using small uh, uh, speech uh, files or uh, small speech frames or we say short duration speech signal and and then cap compute the log FFT square and the output will be uh, your uh, spectrogram. So spectrogram is one of the simplest and elegant feature for characterizing a phone and most of the phoneticians use uh, th these features so uh, so well, as uh, we have seen that uh, uh, MFCC is uh, uh, is 
it's very difficult to you know extract the spectrogram feature spectral uh, uh, feature spectral features from spectrogram if the environment is noisy yeah so if we have to compute the mfcc of a waveform then what we do is we take a short time uh, signal which is uh, represented here by xn which passes through the fft module which gives an output as power spectrum then power spectrum is uh, goes as an input to mail filter and that mail filter output goes to uh, the um, we apply the log on the mail filter output and we get log of mail filter output and followed by we take uh, the inverse Fourier transform which is nothing but the MFCC. So MFCC is one of uh, the important feature uh, for speech and signal processing things. So if we have even uh, if we have to build a speech recognition system we use MFCC as one of uh, one of the features to build build uh, uh, an ASR system. So now we have to see temporal variations in speech spectrum. Okay, so this is uh, I guess we'll uh, be covering uh, in in next module. So next is yes. So next, what we have seen uh, till this time in this module is how speech production system happens uh, how uh, voice sound can be uh, produced through uh, in, produced in uh, human speech production systems and how it is uh, how voice uh, acts as or how speech acts as a primary uh, medium of communication even when vision is not there okay when even if we are at far distance and then we have seen uh, what uh, is actually you know uh, uh, the time domain signal and the frequency domain signal how in frequency domain we can use their features uh, such as uh, formant uh, frequency as well as the formant width and peak to to categorize uh, different kind of bubbles so in in next lecture we'll uh, see how these features can be leveraged to build uh, a speak, uh, speech recognition system or speaker recognition system. Thank you.